This video is for page 14 of your interactive notebook about the discovery of the nucleus. So when we last left off, we were talking about J.J. Thompson and his cathode ray tube experiment. And from that, we got the, the plum pudding model of the atom. And so that was where we had a, a positive sphere that was surrounding a whole bunch of negatively charged, very small electrons. So following that experiment, Geiger and Marsden, who were uh, colleagues of Ernest Rutherford, did an experiment called the Gold Foil Experiment. And in this experiment, they shot a beam of alpha particles at a very thin piece of gold foil. And surrounding the gold foil was a detector screen that would light up when it was hit by the particles, because you couldn't actually see this beam of alpha particles. So we used the detector screen to be able to figure out where they were going. So if you're wondering what an alpha particle is really quickly, an alpha particle is a particle made of two protons and two neutrons that has a positive charge. And the symbol that you see here right after alpha is the Greek letter alpha. And this is an alpha particle. So you see two protons, those would be the positive spheres, bound to two neutrons, and those, um, those particles have no charge. So overall, the thing is positive. Now, it's really worth pointing out that at the time, they would not have known that an alpha particle was made of two protons and two neutrons. That's something that we know now. At the time, an alpha particle was just a very small positive particle, okay? Um, so they shot a beam of these particles at a piece of gold foil. So what happened as a result of this experiment? Well, first, it's probably worth talking about what they expected to happen. Geiger and Marsden expected that all of the particles would pass through the gold foil, and they thought this because the positive charge in Thomson's model of the atom was very diffuse. So there wouldn't have been anything to deflect those particles. And indeed, most of the particles did pass th straight through like they expected with little or no deflection. However, the surprising part is that some of the par particles bounced off at different angles. In fact, some of them bounced almost straight back and this was surprising. This wasn't something that they expected to happen. So on the left side of your notebook here, um, we're going to look at this image, which shows um, Geiger and Marsden's gold foil experiment. So here in the middle, we have the piece of gold foil. And in this box is a source of alpha particles. So this is just some radioactive element that undergoes alpha decay. And then surrounding it is the detector screen, and this screen lights up whenever it's hit by an alpha particle. So you can't see this beam, but wherever the alpha particle ends up hitting the screen, that you can see because it lights up. So they shot this at it, and you can see most of the particles pass straight through with little or no deflection. That's exactly what they expected to happen. But some of these particles bounced off at much different angles, and these are the exceptional ones. And it's from this that we get the conclusions about the Geiger and Marsden experiment. So why did this happen? Why did some of these particles bounce back at such different angles? Well, first of all, the positive alpha particles bounced back because they were being repelled by the positive charge in the atom. But in Thomson's model, this charge was far too diffuse to actually repel the alpha particles. So, if there is enough charge concentrated to be repelling these positive alpha particles, then what that means is that it's concentrated in a very small part of the atom. And we call that the nucleus. And then the rest of the atom surrounding the nucleus where we have the electrons hanging out is just empty space. There's nothing there because all of the mass of the atom was either attributed to the positive and the negative charge. And we know that the negative charge, the electrons, don't have very much mass and they don't take up a lot of space. And now we know that the positive charge, while it has a lot more mass than an electron, also doesn't take up very much space. It's very small and all of that positive charge is concentrated in the middle. So this led Rutherford to propose a new model of the atom. So Rutherford's nuclear model has atoms with a very small and positively charged nucleus, and then the electrons, which are negatively charged, orbit the nucleus in the surrounding empty space. And we're going to look at a picture of that nuclear model here on the left. This is Rutherford's nuclear model. 
And this is probably the model that you would most recognize if I asked you uh, about the atom. This is the one that you see in a whole lot of different logos. So we have the positively charged nucleus right here in the center. Around that is a whole lot of empty space, but within that empty space we have these negatively charged electrons that are flying around the nucleus. And these little pathways right here are just showing the orbit of the electron. They kind of orbit it like planets orbit the solar orbit the sun in the solar system. But of course you can't actually see these lines. These aren't things that exist, right? It's just showing you the pathway. One last picture that I want you to put in is the close-up view of the gold foil experiment. <clears throat> so we looked at kind of the zoomed out view and we were looking at the angles at which those alpha particles were deflecting. But this is a close-up view. So imagine that you're looking up close at the gold foil and each one of these circles represents a gold atom. And each one of these lines, these green lines, represents the path of an alpha particle. So you'll notice that as these alpha particles come in and they hit the gold foil, or the gold atoms, most of them are maybe deflected a little bit or even not at all. And that's because they're not getting anywhere near the positive charge that's concentrated in the middle. But a few of these particles are deflected at much different angles than, than these minor deflections. And that's because they are coming very close to that concentrated nuclear charge. So it's from this right here that uh, Geiger and Marsden draw their conclusions about the composition of the atom. And you can see they have all of that positive charge concentrated in a very small nucleus in the middle. And all of this surrounding area, all of this is empty space. Now there are very tiny electrons in this space. But there's not very many of them in most atoms. There's quite a few in gold, I guess, actually. And even though I didn't draw them in here, you wouldn't be able to see them if I did. They would be so small. Remember, they're a thousand times smaller than an atom. So anyway, this is the, the last thing that you need to do for page 14 of your interactive notebook about the discovery of the nucleus with the Geiger and Marsden gold foil experiment.